I'm Carrie Schuler, and I teach yoga in the Charlottesville area. We are at the lovely Polarity Barn in Batesville, um, and I just want to thank Beth Goldstein for letting us use this space today. We are going to dive right in and um, discuss today some ways to incorporate flow into a yin sequence. So our yin pose for the day will be saddle. And um, we'll just start and you can sort of see how it moves through and I'll talk as we go. Bring your attention to your breath. And for a few moments here, just take a little bit of time to let the breath move and flow through the body. Let your awareness drop in to that breath. And then we'll begin to flow. Inhale, sweep the arms up and over the head. Look to the hands. Exhale, bring the hands through prayer. Dive forward over the knees. Extend the arms long along your mat and come into child's pose. Inhale, come forward to an upward facing cat position. Exhale, curl and round the spine. Draw the belly up. Inhale, begin to come forward. Draw the shoulder blades together on the back. Let the hips sink into a modified upward facing dog. Exhale, curl the toes under, lift the sit bones up, reach, long press through the hands, let the sit bones move in the opposite direction, downward facing dog. And then take as many breaths here as you like, just to settle into the breath. And then when you're ready to move again, inhale, look forward to the hands. Exhale, let the knees drop to the floor. Bring the hips back over the heels, child's pose. Inhale, press through the hands. Let the hips move back more toward the feet. And on the exhale, just give yourself a gentle rock side to side. Then inhale, bring the hands directly outside the knees. Exhale, curl and round the spine, draw the forehead in toward the belly. Inhale, come all the way up to seated. Exhale, bring the hands together in prayer. And then you can roll through that flow as many times as you feel like you need it. And then eventually, when you're ready for more of an introspective yin pose, you move in towards saddle. So in saddle pose, <clears throat> there are two places to set the hips. You can either let the hips sit straight on top of the heels and begin to lie back. It will be more of a back bend through the lumbar arch, so more joint compression in the lumbar spine. Or you can sit the hips in between the feet the stretch will come more through the quadriceps and the hip flexors um, rather than the low back. It's important here when you're lying back to remember, unlike Supta Virasana, we never really lift the hips and tuck the tailbone. You sort of leave this arch in the back as you lie back, which is why I have this block here behind my back. And when I move into the pose, I go uber slow. So on an inhale, I move a half an inch to an inch, and then I exhale and relax, especially in the hips in this pose. And then I'll take another inhale, move a half an inch to an inch, and on the exhale, settle into the pose. And I move that slowly. And for today's purposes, I'll just go a little bit quicker than ordinarily and eventually making my way all the way down onto this lovely block. First finding way onto the elbows and then eventually making your way all the way onto your back. And this lovely block is here. And I'm gonna try to get the tip end of the block right in between my shoulder blades so that when I eventually come down into the pose, my head is on the floor.
and then to come out of the pose, you move just as slowly as you did when you came in, a half an inch to an inch on the inhale and then resting on the exhale. So just for this, for today, I'm just gonna move a little bit quicker. Eventually making your way to a seated position and after five minutes of being in that pose, the seated position will feel very good. And it's important to just rest here for a few breaths. And then to incorporate some kind of flow after the pose. So I take this left hand back by my left foot, inhale, reach the right arm up, and swing it over the head, lift the hips. Exhale, bring the arm back through center, let the hips settle. Right hand to right foot, inhale, sweep the left arm wide. Exhale, release. And I can do that flow as many times as, as I like, or I can come back to the original flow that we did before we came into saddle. Another way to flow after a yin pose is to just simply shake the legs or the body, whatever, especially after saddle when you extend the legs and it feels really good on the knees to just shake the legs a little bit. And then to come into a stabilizing pose, I bring the feet in toward the hips, take my hands behind my back and come into a reverse tabletop position. So I'll take an inhale here, lift the chest and the sternum, and on the exhale, press through the feet and the hands, lift the hips up. And then imagine that there's a ball or a block in between the, the knees and I'm gently squeezing in on that block. It just brings integrity back into the joints. Not that we lost it to begin with. And then on an exhale, release the hips to the floor and release. So that's one way to work a flow in with a yin pose. And there are many yin poses and they're all lovely. And I recommend playing on your mat and having fun. Um, don't forget Shavasana. It's very important to take a Shavasana at the end of your practice. Thank you very much for building the bridge with Ihanaman. Om Shanti. Namaste.